Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Monica Brown. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I'm the assistant program manager at Rebus Community. I'm coming to you today from Redmond, Oregon, on the unceded territory of the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs. I thank them for allowing me to live and work on this land. And hi, everybody. I'm Apoor Varshok. I'm the director of open education at the Rebus Foundation, and I lead the Rebus Community Initiative and have the joy of collaborating with Monica um, at work. I also use she, her, hers pronouns. And today I'm joining you from Philadelphia on the indigenous territory known as Lenape Hoking, the traditional homelands of the Lenape, also called the Leni Lenape or the Delaware Indians. I'm very grateful for the privilege to connect with all of you from this land. Today, Monica and I will tell you about a professional development pathway we created at Rebus to support OER learners who are eager to establish themselves as OER leaders. We wanted to create a unique opportunity and pathway for leaders to build skills that help them beyond what is currently offered. And as you know, leadership can take on many different forms. So with our program, we have focused on using teaching, good instruction, facilitation, and managing a community of practice as a means to cultivate a leadership style. This session will explore how a professional development facilitator program that was created for faculty, librarians, and staff enabled emerging leaders to gain a robust set of skills in mentoring, facilitating, guiding project management, and more. We brought on a group of alumni slash graduates uh, from our flagship textbook success program to facilitate the course for future cohorts. To provide a bit of background, the textbook success program is a year long cohort experience for participants to develop foundational knowledge about open collaborative publishing models and apply these principles in real time to the OER that they're creating. The program follows a weekly structure for the first three months and then switches to a monthly cadence uh, for the remainder of the year. Participants learn to construct and maintain a robust project team, share their work and process more openly, and of course, become OER advocates throughout their own professional communities. The TSP started back in 2019, and as it has continued to grow, we've seen an increasing need and opportunity for additional leadership growth in the form of facilitating and leading these emerging communities of practice. So we wanted to create a pathway for program graduates to continue their open education journey. This May, so May 2021, we began our alumni facilitator program and worked with um, three program graduates to lead the next batch of TSP participants. And you'll hear more from these three facilitators, Amy Minervini, Joel Glad, and Brian McGeary during this presentation. The interest from our program graduates to continue their relationship-centered experience in TSB has been very evident. Brian, who's currently facilitating multiple TSB cohorts, explains how being a Rebus facilitator has been an essential professional development experience for him. Quote, Connecting with and learning from others and hopefully helping them to learn too is what makes any kind of educational endeavor feel like it's worth the time and effort. That intangible human element is something that is hard to quantify and it is satisfying in a way that professional accomplishments and money can never be. To give you all a sense of that human element and the different connections that crop up in TSP, we've pulled together some data for you from our two summer cohorts. Uh, as you can see on the slide here, um, the cohorts comprise a total of 17 OER projects that range across 15 discipline areas. And program participants average around 25 people a cohort, so almost um, 50 people for the two. People can work individually or in teams of up to four. And each cohort contains participants from a range of positions on campus, like librarians, administrators, instructional designers, technologists, um, all in addition to faculty experts or instructors. And our facilitators need to keep all of these contexts, all of these varying levels of expertise, different project goals in mind as they facilitate a total of 21 sessions over the year. Through these diverse cohorts, our facilitators have the opportunity to stretch that expertise by providing advice and support for people and projects far beyond their immediate experience. And I'll say with the training and support provided by Monica, 
um, Arepas facilitators really grow into these roles as mentors and guides for their cohorts. As you may imagine, working with such a diverse group of people and projects opens up the potential to build a really wide range of skills. On this slide, we've compiled a few of the top skills that we see our facilitators building throughout this program. Um, I'll just highlight a couple of them for you here. They're including articulating best practices in the various pieces of the publishing process, making connections between projects across stages and disciplines, and of course, the management of the many simultaneous technical components. We see a direct correlation between these skills and the workforce demands of leadership positions in higher education. However central these skills may be, finding the opportunity to practice them is often pretty rare. This is why the Rebus facilitation pathway is so rewarding. Joel Glad, um, another one of our facilitators notes, and I'm gonna quote him here. He says, I'm primarily an educator, but I don't know often get the chance to manage a cohort composed of other professors and academic leaders. This experience has helped me to see what transfers from my own classroom experience and what requires a different touch given the context." End quote. This facilitation opportunity we've created is more than just your average university teaching experience. There's a different touch that's required to lead a community of practice for other professionals. And it's a skill that many educators don't have the chance to build in most college and university environments. We know that this experience has resonated with our facilitators in part because of the unique chance to work with professionals from um, multiple institutions um, around the world on their open education initiatives. Yes, even for myself, coming into this role to train and coach our facilitators has provided me with some unique opportunities for growth. I was formerly an open education coordinator at a mid-sized public university. There were many chances to get involved in policy, administration, and of course, that relationship building component across departments. Yet I've found that there wasn't quite the chance to mentor and lead with my expertise to the extent that I've been able to do so with our facilitators program. So with that said, um, what type of further training did we conduct? Our facilitators were already equipped with the foundational knowledge around OER, open publishing, accessibility and inclusive design in OER when they enrolled in our TSP. Some of them had also completed other programs focused on copyright training or open librarianship. We wanted to guide them around putting this knowledge into use with a community of practice, leading with care and, and introducing others to those concepts. We put together a facilitation guide to act as a central document for facilitators to review expectations, curriculum, and resources. Initial onboarding involved going through this guide with, as well as in identifying the common problems they might need to address with their groups. We also implemented a mentorship model with a one-on-one -on -one training meetings and debrief sessions to support facilitators in leveraging their strengths as they adapted to the challenge of facilitating their virtual community of practice. This coaching model allowed us to hone in on the areas that individual facilitators wanted to grow the most, whether that was being able to make quick connections between participants or manage the many technical pieces at play during a session. Over the course of the first 12 weeks of the TSP, facilitators had one and a half hour week sessions on a weekly basis with their cohorts, enabling them to really rapidly apply feedback and continue to build those great working relationships with their cohorts. They learned the steps to successfully prepare for a session, which not only included getting familiar with the session's lesson plan, but also staying up to date with project teams and thinking ahead for what might be the next step a given team should take. And of course, this process had its fair share of ups and downs. As our facilitator, Amy Minervini, put it, uh, to quote, the most challenging aspect has been navigating the technical aspects of facilitating. You have to be a stage manager of sorts, simultaneously presenting, monitoring the chat, answering direct messages, keeping an eye on time and pacing, and making sure that examples are at the ready, all while being able to think on your feet and smile. Even though I've been teaching for over 20 years, there is extra pressure when leading a group of peers. Some who have more experience than me, many who are experts in their field, and all who are seeking to gain something from each session." End quote. Virtual facilitation skills take some time to develop, 
but as you can see from this quote, our facilitators found it harder to settle into their role as mentor or guide. To go from being that person um, asking the question as a TSP participant to the one having to answer them as the TSP facilitator. One of the bigger insights our facilitators have had throughout this process is that leadership doesn't correlate with knowing it all up front. Amy shares, quote, over time, I became less nervous because I don't have all the answers and I don't need to. With each session under my belt, I feel more comfortable leading large groups and feel extremely privileged to play a part in a small part in advancing open educational resources and promoting the mighty community of open publishing. Part of the journey of becoming a leader involves knowing who to turn to when you don't know the answers yourself, be it someone on your team, in your classroom or elsewhere, and to be constantly learning. Being honest and vulnerable with your cohort in this manner creates an environment of shared learning where everyone has the opportunity to contribute as much as they learn. In our final few minutes before we get to questions, we wanted to reflect on the impact we think our, this professional development program has had. As we've noted previously in putting together this program, one of the critical needs we identified was an opportunity for OER champions to gain more hands-on experience that builds on their existing introductory knowledge of open. By allowing them to step into this role of teacher, and in this case, um, of leader, we've seen some tremendous results. First, facilitators gain a host of skills having to do with virtual instruction and online communities of practice. By being the stage manager, um, they're alert not only the technical details of the online classroom or forum, but also being attuned to how students are engaging in the class and our facilitators have built a number of observation, multitasking and empathetic leadership skills. Mentoring and teaching adult students in a variety of contexts also heightened their relationship management skills. Facilitators demonstrated responsiveness, flexibility and an awareness of different challenges that may impede or affect OER production. In addition to being a space where larger developments in the field are discussed, the experience also serves as a foundation to grow general confidence to participate actively in the space of the discipline. Working alongside a peer network meant that facilitators also had the space to be transparent about their reflections, struggles, and successes um, in their journey as an emerging leader. And I'll say the supportive environment and the mentorship model that Monica has provided ensured that our facilitators felt comfortable navigating their leadership role in this mock or trial setting where they could feel comfortable um, failing as much as they could feel comfortable succeeding. We found that our facilitators demonstrated an accelerated leadership growth, even a few months into this program, as they accumulated the skills and confidence that would otherwise have developed over many years. Some facilitators are using this experience to enhance their tenure and promotion dossiers, while others are using this as a stepping stone for leading wide-scale OER initiatives in their regions. Brian shares, um, and to quote him here, I think the nature of this work directly translates to what I do in my job as a learning design and open education engagement librarian. There's that element of building my network and raising my profile that is important to my promotion and tenure case. But I would say that this experience has been and continues to be most helpful in building my confidence as an open education leader, end quote. I think that idea really of trusting people to lead and giving them the confidence boost they need to apply the expertise that they bring to open education that's really the final ingredient to any successful leadership recipe. Um, and to end, I think we'll just say, we hope that you um, have seen that investing in current and future OER leaders really ensures the longevity and sustainability of our collective work in open. We certainly have seen this to be the case and um, hope that this presentation has convinced you similarly. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to us today. Um, we'll note here that the slide contains more details about the textbook success program that we've mentioned, as well as some contact details if you want to get in touch. If you're watching this session live, now is the time that we'd like to turn to you for any questions and comments. 
And if you're watching the pre-recorded session in your own time, please feel free to follow up with us. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks everyone, and especially Brian, Joel, and Amy for all of your hard work and for your reflections today. Looking forward to hearing your questions and comments.